Hi everyone, Al DeMarco here, General Manager of DeMarcoSports.com, and yes, I am back here on the video, and I have a reason why I'm wearing the baseball cap. Now, I know I joke about my wife here being a gambling degenerate. I know I've said many times that she's a video poker addict. I know I've made mention of the fact that she's never met a slot machine. That she, and all these things are 100% true. And it's a damn good thing between me and you that she doesn't watch these video reports. But I have to give her credit. And I say this lovingly. Because as I was bitching and moaning, which I occasionally am apt to do, about not doing the video the past couple of days and having to do the videos, period, anymore, because I'm tired of doing them. Uh, because at the moment I have, mm, I think, seven stitches right here. I have four on this side, or another three or four right there, and I have eight over on that side because of where they had to take some precancerous lesions out. And because I'm on this amazing leukemia medicine, which I have no complaints about, but it makes, um, it, I bleed incessantly because of it. I bruise like you wouldn't believe, like somebody took a sledgehammer to it, and it's the black and blue marks, the bloodiness, it's just, I mean, whew, thank God she's cleaning the wounds because it's, wow, it's, it's a mess. <laughs> And until I get the stitches out here, uh, I think Wednesday or Thursday, depending on how it looks, it's like, mm, yeah, there's a reason I wasn't doing the video a couple days ago. But she says to me, she says, well, why don't you wear a hat? Okay, didn't think about that. Of course, I'm not a guy that like has a whole collection of jerseys and hats. I'm not into that whole scene, you know? So I go scurrying around and I go, I have one hat. A vintage Chicago hat, Cubs hat. Bought at Wrigley Field back in 1987. And guys, I used to be a baseball junkie. And I'm gonna get to your complimentary play here in a minute, but I used to really be in to go into a lot of games, like 40, 50, 60 games a year, all over the country. I used to go to spring training every single year before spring training was a thing even. But my best friend, his father used to own a car dealership in suburban Philadelphia. So whenever any of the athletes in Philadelphia needed cars, we used to shuttle the cars back and forth, the Veterans Stadium or the Spectrum, if any of the Indy or NASCAR racers were coming in and there was a big race at Pocono, we used to run the cars up there because you needed to get the cars somewhere and who else was going to drive them? I mean, I can't tell you how many trips I make back and forth, up and down to Philadelphia or up to the Poconos, just driving a car up, driving a car back. That's what we did. Well, consequently, we'd get tickets whenever you wanted to as well. So we got this idea one time. We'd been to Fenway and we thought, well, let's go to Wrigley Field. So that's what we did, three-game series. I think we got tickets from Lance Parrish or Greg Gross at the time. And we always sat with the players' families and, you know, that section. Right behind home plate, I think we were eight rows off the field, hot as hell in August. We get there. We fly into O'Hara on a Friday. We get there at about 1 o'clock for the afternoon game, buy my little hat, sit there. Oh, my God, just drenched in sweat. 90-some degrees, 80% humidity. I mean, dying. But the Phillies were up. We left bottom of the seventh inning. No, not because we were one of those type of fans, but because we had an ulterior motive. We were driving to Milwaukee to the old county stadium because the Brewers were hosting the White Sox that night. We did that on Friday. We did that on Saturday. On Sunday, both teams were playing an afternoon game. What were we going to do? Well, we stayed to watch the Cubs and Phillies. But Sunday night, the Appleton Foxes, who had a cool hat that we wanted to get, they were playing, so we drove to Appleton, Wisconsin and caught that game as well. Drove back to Chicago, flew out Monday morning, six games, less than three days. That's the type of baseball junkie I used to be. What happened? It's like working in a candy store. You don't want to eat the chocolate anymore because when you're in this business, it's like, eh, just don't want to follow sports any longer unless you have to. So anyway, that's my story of why I have this vintage of my only last hat the chicago white Sox hat was used to i used to have that one with had that old sox with the little guy on it that was a great hat too i was playing ball one day i left it on the top, i took it off left it on the top of my uh, car drove off somewhere it's on the pennsylvania turnpike <laughs> i forgot the damn hat pissed me off anyway let's get to your um uh place today uh listen one thing I've always said is that 
I will not prostitute myself for a sale. No ifs, ands, or buts. If I sell college basketball today, the company makes more money. Same thing for any of the guys at the site. However, I've always encouraged them to have the same attitude as me. If you don't like a play, don't sell it to make money. Sell the play and release the play that you love the most. For me today, that is in baseball. Because these two games today are extremely tough. My best bet today is going to be on the diamond. And how many times have I told you the first three weeks of any season, no matter the sport, is the easiest time to make money because it's the only time we have the advantage of the odds makers because they don't know what to expect from any team coming out of spring training or exhibition or the preseason. And the odds are always the softest numbers that you will find. I opened up the baseball season with a winner on the... Dodgers minus $1.20, which was a joke on the run line, 7-1 over St. Louis at home on Thursday. And my best bet today is going to be top-rated 15-dime release in baseball. It's one of your nine afternoon games, and it's a small underdog. And it's the half-price play of the day using coupon code HALF. Now, last night, I was going for potential basketball winner number seven out of eight. And my fifth straight potential big dance winner, it was Marquette. I lost. Eh. It happens. What can I say? It was on the heels of using Connecticut the night prior. And of course, here on the video report, um, I gave you Creighton and I lost that play too. Yes, it does happen. I will lose plays. Uh, as Connecticut failed, uh, excuse me, as Creighton failed to get the job again against Tennessee. So now 30, 16, and 1 with the complimentary plays here in college basketball over the past five weeks. And kind of interesting that in the Sweet 16, if you just picked the straight-up winners, you went 8-0 and against the spread. It's an anomaly, though. Really, it is an anomaly. Uh, the underdogs went 5-3 and straight up and against the spread in the Sweet 16, which leads you to today's plays, neither of which I particularly care for. You know how I've been riding Connecticut, right? I had Connecticut on Thursday, minus 11.5. They were my best bet. They won by 30 over San Diego State. Oh, eight and a half points against Illinois. Did I not give you Illinois as a complimentary winner on Thursday, too, against Iowa State? This is an interesting matchup. You've got a Connecticut team that has only lost three games all season. One at Kansas by four, nothing to be ashamed of. Uh, one at um, Seton Hall when Donovan Klingon got hurt in that game. And one at Creighton which came three days later after following a huge revenge fuel blowout of Marquette. Again, this is a team that has won nine consecutive big dance games by double-digit margins, a team that has covered 12 of its last 14 games. But it could be an interesting matchup situation here tonight. You've got a Connecticut team that has extremely strong rim defense, as long as Klingon stays out of foul trouble. You've got an Illinois team that is as high as a team can be after knocking off Iowa State. And how did they knock off Iowa State? They took the ball aggressively to the hoop. And Illinois has size, which could cause trouble for Illinois tonight. And you've got Terrence Shannon Jr., who I have been singing his praises as a basketball player, let me just emphasize that. And if you know the situation, you know why I said that. Because the guy has just been phenomenal, starting with the Big Ten tournament. He has averaged 31.1 points in the postseason. But again, Illinois has such size. Connecticut's the better shooting team, especially from the outside. But can they deal with Illinois' size? And yet, I look at the Illini. This is a team that lost at Purdue by five. Lost at home to Maryland by nine. Lost at Northwestern by five in overtime. Lost at Michigan State by eight. How the hell they lost to Penn State by one is beyond me. And then lost at home to Purdue again by six. First inclination, I probably lean toward taking the points with Illinois. Yet I could also see Connecticut winning this game handily. I don't know. So I lean a little toward Illinois. Then you've got Alabama in a rematch against Clemson is a three to three and a half point favorite. Listen, Alabama shocked the hell out of me by beating North Carolina. But as I said in yesterday's video report, the Tar Heels lost that game as much as Alabama won that game because they couldn't hit the broad side of the barn 
Starting at the second half, and R.J. Davis picked the worst time to have his worst game of the entire season, going 0 for 9 from three-point land. Now, when these two met November 28th, and here, ironically, we have a rematch at two 24 and 11 teams. Clemson won 85 to 77 in Tuscaloosa. It was their road opener, part of an 11 1 start for the Tigers. Mark Sears had 23, PJ Hall had 21. But keep in mind, that was the Tide's third game in a five day stretch. And they clearly had tired legs because Bama missed their first nine three-pointers, only finished with 31.4% from beyond the arc and 34.3% overall field goal-wise. They shot over 40% against North Carolina the other night. Clemson has just been a miraculous team, just like NC State from the ACC. Winning and covering every single outing as a road puppy here in the dance. And they have been on a great little roll. 13-1 and one this season outside of the ACC. <laughs> I mean, a mediocre team in the ACC outside of conference. They've been just amazing, right? Knocked off New Mexico. Knocked off Baylor. Knocked off Arizona. But if Alabama plays the way Alabama played the other night against North Carolina, the Tide win this game. And they have played very good defense. I will give them credit, which they didn't do it all during the regular season against North Carolina and Grand Canyon in their last two games. And they are the better offensive team. So I lean a little toward Alabama here minus the points. Do I like either one of these games? I'm just telling you, I don't like either. So if you're asking me what the official complimentary play, there is none. I don't like either one of these games. If you paid me, I wouldn't bet either one of these games. Handicap them from here to eternity. Don't like either one of them, wouldn't bet them. Which one of the opinions do I like more? Equal. Alabama and Illinois give the Tide a slight edge. So, that's where I'm going. Good luck, guys. Talk to you again tomorrow.